If we recap what we've done so far in this chapter is we first introduced Bessel's differential equation and then we said the solutions of this equation are the Bessel functions of the first kind. But then we promptly forgot about the differential equation and then we redefined the Bessel functions using the generating function. But then the question is, are these two definitions equivalent, at least in case of integer orders? And that's the topic of this video here. We want to show that if we have a Bessel function defined using the generating function, that that particular function also satisfies the differential equation. And that shows that these two definitions are equivalent. So how are we going to tackle this problem? Well, we've derived from the generating function a set of recurrence relationships. So our goal is to start from one of these recurrence relationships and then see if we can transform that somehow into the Bessel differential equation. And that will show that the definitions are, uh, are equivalent. So let's just take one of these recurrence relationships at random. Well, not exactly at random, but a good starting point is this guy here, jn minus 1x equal to n over x jn x plus j n prime x. Why this one? Because it at least contains a derivative with respect to x and a differential equation is all about derivatives, right? So let's clean this up a little bit. Let's multiply everything by x to get rid of this denominator. And then let's reorder some terms here so that we get x j n prime of x um, plus n j n of x minus x j n minus 1 of x and this thing equal to 0. We're still very far from Bessel's differential equation uh, specifically because Bessel's differential equation has second order derivatives and this guy only has a first order derivative. So that suggests a next course of action, which is to pause the video and calculate the derivative with respect to x of this particular expression. So let's take the derivative. Let's work term by term. Here we have a product. So we first take the derivative of the first factor that gives us one and then we just copy the second factor, then we keep the first factor, take the derivative of the second one. Okay, then here this becomes n j n prime. This becomes minus j n minus one and minus x j n minus one prime. This thing equal to zero. But the good news is now we have our second order derivative. But uh, remember, in Bessel's differential equation, that second order derivative was not multiplied by x, but rather by x squared. So this suggests that we should take this equation and multiply everything by x squared. So if you do that, and if we again rearrange some terms, we start with x squared jn double prime of x, then we have this thing. So this becomes here. We can combine these two terms and after uh, multiplication with x that gives us n plus 1 x j n prime and then we have two more terms which we're going to multiply by x to give us minus x j n minus 1 minus x squared j n minus 1 prime equal to 0. Right. Let's take stock. We have the first term of the differential equation. That's okay. The second term of the differential equation is actually jn prime times x. So that appears here, but it's multiplied by, not by one, but by n plus one. So we should find a way to get rid of this n here. And that way we can recover the second term. So how do we do that? Well, we can take this particular equation here as a starting point. So let's call this equation here equation uh, B. But if we look back at uh, this particular equation here, uh, let's call that equation equation A. So if we take a look at equation A, there we have x j n prime of x. And here we have n plus one x j n prime. 
So if we take uh, this equation A here, if we multiply everything by N, and if we subtract then the result from uh, equation B, then that way we can get rid of this first N here. So pause the video and do these manipulations and see what happens next. So what we're calculating is B minus N uh, times equation A. And if we do that, well, of course, the first term here stays the same. But as we've just been explaining, doing that procedure allows us to uh, take this term, combine it with uh, that term times n, and then after subtraction, we get x, j, n prime. Okay, so that's uh, this thing taken care of. Um, then let's have a look what happens with the other two terms. If we multiply them by n and then subtract, so basically multiplying by, by minus n, so uh, that then gives us minus n squared j n and then here for the final term this becomes uh, plus n x j n plus one so uh, plus n x j n sorry minus one and then here we have another minus x so if we combine these two if we factor out x then we have x n minus one j n minus one okay and then, of course, let's not forget the final term here. That's minus x squared j n minus 1 prime equal to 0. So let's have a look at the results. The first two terms here are the first two terms of Bessel's differential equation. That's good news. Also, this term is a term that pops up that also figures in the original differential equation. That's good news. Uh, but what's bad news at the moment is these two terms, because obviously yeah, they are terms in j and minus 1, and we should somehow transform them, transform them into terms with j of order n. So that's our next goal. Um, luckily, we have lots of recurrence relationships that might help us. So for example, one recurrence relationship that we could use here is this guy. That's j n plus 1 is equal to n over x j n minus j n prime so pause the video see if you need to reform this equation a little bit perhaps shifting the indices and then try to eliminate this j n minus one from our current equation Now, what, what we should do here um, is if you take a look at the derivative here, then it becomes clear that we should shift all of the index, indices by one. So this should, uh, we should write this as j n n minus one x j n minus one minus j n minus one prime. So this is now a recurrence relation that, that we have. If you take a look at uh, this guy here, and you compare it with that guy, and you see if we take this equation over here, and if we multiply that by x squared, we exactly recover what we have here, because division by x then becomes multiplication, and then here we have an extra x squared. So this means that in this equation, we can replace this whole thing by x squared times the left-hand side over here. And let's see what happens. So that gives us x squared j n double prime plus x j n prime minus n squared j n and then we should here have plus x squared j n equal to zero and that's exactly saying that Bessel function of order n j n satisfies the Bessel differential equation because remember the Bessel differential equation is the following x squared x prime plus x x prime and then we had plus x squared minus the order squared x equal to zero so this shows that the circle is round that if we have a function a Bessel function defined using the generating function and we can derive recurrence relationships and we can transform these recurrent relationships into showing that that function also satisfies Bessel's differential equation so the two definitions are equivalent